Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for everyone coming and for our federal partners, state as well. And also thank you for extending your staying, being with us in Riverside on tomorrow and Monday. So thank you for that. So the overview um, that I will talk to you about today are the highlights of our plan that we ended up submitting for the 1919-06. Um, as the slide that was presented before, Riverside County is one of the counties that was identified as a targeted um, county with high incidence. So proposed plan was needed for us. Um, and then talk about the thoughts on an opportunity uh, regional approach. We currently are with uh, Ryan White Part A TGA with San Bernardino County. So we have an ongoing and existing relationship with them as well as uh, the statewide working groups as well. And then talking about the infrastructure and resources that may be needed. So Riverside County, um, here's a map of our county. It has different regions and all of the regions kind of have a different personality. So when we're thinking about addressing HIV in Riverside County, there isn't a one approach that we can take that's going to meet all of the needs of the community. So on the Eastern end, we have more MSM of color, um, white MSM as well. And then on the Western region, we see more Latinx, African-Americans that are infected with HIV. So we have kind of a dichotomous county there. So we really wanted the EPI to drive the work that we were going to be doing. And over time, we're seeing that where we used to have middle-aged men who have sex with men becoming HIV infected in Riverside County, now it's shifting and we're seeing a lot more young people. And overall, and you'll see on the next slide, um, it looks like our cases are decreasing. And that would be a good thing if we left it there. But when we drill down into the other racial and ethnic groups, they're good, the data is going the wrong way in those groups. So that is what um, we ended up focusing on. So this shows pretty much that African Americans are the most um, disproportionately affected group um, and also just the younger age population as well as you'll see in the next slide. So from 2016 to 2018, over 40% of the new um, HIV cases were under 30 years old. This was a whole uh, shift, like I mentioned before, in Riverside County. That's not what we were used to seeing. And then increasing incidents in the West and South um, County are shown in the orange and blue lines. So what we've done a good job in Riverside County, um, as we look at viral suppression, we noticed that it's um, pretty stable. People are living longer lives in uh, Riverside County on the west or in the eastern end, but we're not seeing that duplicated on the eastern, the western end. Let me say that again. We're seeing goodness and longer lives on the eastern end, right, Palm Springs area. Many resources there, um, access to care is great, but on the other portions of the county, we're not seeing that as much. So that could be why we're seeing an increase in incidence. Okay, so we talked about the trends. Um, between 2016 and 2018, there were 839 new cases in Riverside County, 64% in people of color, and the median age was 32, 42, um, and then the wrong racial disparities, uh, it was 30. So again, high incidence in our younger population. We really needed to figure out what we're going to do. One of the things that we know and we stated, um, PrEP is definitely preventing new HIV cases from happening. So um, that is what we decided to focus on in collaboration with the HIV Planning Council. We ended up having a meeting that pulled in community members to ask them. We presented the data. This is what the data is showing us. What do you feel would be the, an option that we could use to go ahead and reduce incidents in the county. And so PrEP is something um, that was brought up. And so now we're at the point, okay, we can't come into the community and tell them how we're going to engage them in PrEP. We're having meetings, there's a community meeting tomorrow, we're act actually asking folks, how would you, um, how would a PrEP message relate to you that would make you get not only onto PrEP, but then stay on PrEP? How would you sustain that so that your incidence of HIV um, 
you don't end up getting HIV. So those are the questions that we're having with the community, asking for their input um, and moving forward that way. So our plan um, has a small component of mental health because it was mentioned also that many of the clients that we see have other issues going on with them, whether it's substance abuse, maybe they're out um, having sex because they're trying to get their high, whatever it is. So um, addressing those issues as well, making sure that they have access to substance abuse treatment if they need that. If they have a mental health issue, then that also address any other social determinants um, that need to be addressed so that PrEP can be a higher on their um, radar than trying to get a meal for that day. So making it equitable. So I got my uh, three minute warning already. So I'm gonna <laughs> get through some of these. Um, just again, community engagement, looking at the data, letting the data drive what we're doing, um, I think it's essential because people can relate to data if we present it in ways that make sense to them. And then again, focusing on people of color, um, young people, residents of the West and South County. Um, and the preliminary data did not have a full assessment of the mental health resources that would be needed. Um, as someone mentioned, I think from Orange County, we had a limited amount of time. So we put in what we could and then it's a living plan. So as we get more input from the community and um, other resources, then we'll be able to develop that further. So regional opportunities, um, looking at state leadership as well to move forward um, with greater flexibility in Medi-Cal and the other payers to keep clients covered and in care. Um, funding case management is something that I know one of the SHEAC groups is looking at, how we actually use case managers to walk people along that whole continuum. So we're fortunate in Riverside County where the STD branch is co-located with HIV. So we can see a person all along um, that continuum and we're looking at some data and actually um, seeing how we can go ahead and collaborate more um, across investigators. So that if someone has an HIV infection, they don't hear from that CDS that does HIV and then if they also have syphilis or gonorrhea, hear from another person. So within our department, making sure that there's that safety net for that person and that warm handoff as well, I think that needs to happen. <laughs> so uh, my last slide here um, is uh, other regional opportunities to continue the conversation and we're all here um, we can network those communications don't need to happen in a formal space such as this but if there's someone that says something that resonates with you make that connection and then collaborate offline as well and I'll stop there you're welcome